Imagine a day where you can simulate a world so perfectly that you can recreate every single neurosynaptic thought you could have, but now you're in the simulation on the computer. Is reality all just one big simulation? Well, some big names like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Elon Musk, and many more think it's a very possible that we are. So let's get into it. Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of the most charismatic scientists since Bill Nye. He thinks that there's a very good chance we could be living in a simulation. In fact, he thinks it's about a 50-50 chance. All of this could be one big simulation sitting on someone's hard drive. When Tyson was asked about us possibly living in a simulation of some kind, he said, quote, I think the likelihood may be very high. Then he noted the massive gap between human and chimpanzee intelligence, despite how much DNA we share with each other. 98%, just so you know. So in the vastness of space, there could be some other beings far, far more superior superior to us in every conceivable way. Tyson went on to say we would be drooling, blithering idiots in their presence. If that's the case, it is easy for me to imagine that everything in our lives is just a creation of some other entity for their entertainment. A lot of the popularity about the whole are we living in a simulation thing came not only from the Matrix, of course, but from Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at the University of Oxford in 2003. He came out with a theory that what we perceive as reality might actually be a sophisticated computer simulation created by an advanced civilization. He based his theory on three possibilities, one of which must be true. Either human civilizations never reach a stage where they can create such simulations because they either go extinct or choose not to. Advanced civilizations are not interested in creating simulations of their ancestors' lives. And the third is that we are almost certainly living in a simulation. See, Bostrom argues that if the first two options are not true, then the third must be because if any advanced civilizations are capable of creating simulations and are interested in doing so, the number of simulated realities would far outnumber the one originally created. So the probability that we are living in the real world is very low. To make it simpler, think about it like this. Let's say you have one real world and millions of simulated ones. If you randomly found yourself in one of these worlds, the chances are incredibly high that you're in one of the simulations rather than the one real world. People often liken this idea to video games, just as characters in a game might believe their world is real. Bostrom suggests that our reality could be created by beings with technology far beyond our own, and we wouldn't necessarily know it. Next up, we have Elon Musk. A man so incredibly smart, yet so incredibly dumb at the same time. It's weird. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Elon Musk himself, really, but his theory on a simulated world. Uh, let's get into that. The CEO of SpaceX and Tesla himself really believes that we are indeed living in a simulation. He's talked about this on the Joe Rogan podcast and, and press conferences, and unlike the other folks on this list who just theorize about it and think it could be a possibility, Musk is like 99. 0.9% sure, stating that there's a quote, one in a billion chance we're in base reality. So just a little less on the fence than Neil deGrasse Tyson, for example. Max Tegmark is a physicist at MIT who's written a couple papers on simulation theory, one in 2014 entitled, Is the Universe a Simulation? And another that came out just a couple years ago called Detecting Structures in Universe Simulations, which he wrote along with postdoctoral researcher at the University of Copenhagen, Hans Olaf Kold. Max Tegmark believes that our universe can all be broken down mathematically, and that even reality itself is part of a mathematical structure. Now, he outlined this in his 2014 book, Our Mathematical Universe. So Tegmark thinks that these mathematical structures could essentially be similar to the type of code we see used in, say, video games, a simulation. In Tegmark's own words, if I were a character in a computer game, I would also discover eventually that the rules seemed completely rigid and mathematical. Next up, we have James Gates, who spoke at the Isaac Asimov Memorial Debate along with Max Tegmark, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and others. Gates is a theoretical physicist at the University of Maryland, and he made similar discoveries as Max Tegmark did. He stated, I was driven to error-correcting codes. They're what make browsers work. So why were they in the equations I was studying about quarks and electrons and supersymmetry? This brought me to the stark realization 
that I could no longer say people like Max are crazy. So we've discussed a lot of theories and, and stuff from scientists, but how about strange first-hand experiences? This story comes to us from Reddit user JenL729. When I was about four or five years old, my father's uncle passed away. My father was going to the wake, but my mother was working, so he needed to bring me with him. I had never been to a wake or a funeral before, and I do believe this was my first ever experience with death. We arrived at the funeral home, and I followed him through the procession of family members. Then we approached the open casket. I don't recall being afraid. Curious and bewildered would be better terms to describe the feelings, I think. I do know that there was absolutely no sense of fear at that point. We stepped away from the casket and I stood by my father as he chatted with family members. I needed to use the restroom and it was just around the corner, so he told me to go and come right back. I turned to the corner, used the restroom slash sink, then exited the bathroom. When I came out and turned the corner, the room was empty and there was no casket. My father was gone and so were all the other people that were there only a moment ago. I fearfully began wandering around the funeral home, but not a person could be found. The entire building was silent and empty. Finally, as I neared the front entrance of the building and was going to step outside, an employee approached me from the alcove on the right where they kept the coats to see if I was okay. I don't remember any of the conversation, but they turned me around and directed me back to the bathroom. When I came out of the bathroom, everything had returned to normal. Now, that person was very young. Uh, it's a very old memory they had, so uh, finicky, but interesting story. So is there any way to actually test whether or not we're living in a simulation? Well, not the moment, but there are a team of scientists led by Martin Savage that have been working on it, and he believes that one day computers will be advanced enough to determine it. Martin Savage and his team had been attempting to actually simulate a universe inside a computer. Now, that hasn't been accomplished yet, but it could be a possibility in the future. Martin J. Savage is a physics professor at the University of Washington who thinks our universe might be a giant computer simulation run by our ancestors. He and his colleagues started looking for specific patterns in the universe that also appear in smaller computer simulations we create today. One pattern he used as an example is the limitations in the energy of cosmic rays. If our universe were a simulation, these cosmic rays might not behave as expected because of the resource constraints of whatever's running the simulation. That, that one's hard to wrap your head around. But. His next glitch in the matrix story comes to us from Reddit user JBBJ84 and goes as follows. The one thing that has continued to make me question my reality is a dream I had back in eighth grade about my girlfriend who was going to break up with me. I dreamt that she was sitting in a room with her best friend discussing whether she would break up with me or not. I distinctly remember the point she made about being too young and whatever. It was a long time ago, but I do remember that after waking up from that dream, the reasons she had for breaking up with me were ingrained in my brain. For some reason, when I woke up after this dream, I had a weird feeling that I was gonna receive some bad news. Lo and behold, I check my phone and there's a massive text message from my then girlfriend explaining why we should break up. With the exact same reasoning as I witnessed in the dream I had. Even weirder is that I found out the friend I had seen in my dream was actually with my ex when she sent the message. It was the weirdest effing thing I've ever experienced. It was completely out of the blue and I didn't expect the breakup text at all before the dream. Now, after I've read about simulation theory, the thought can't stop popping into my mind that somehow I was able to visualize the next part of this game tree that I unexpectedly was able to view what was going to happen next. It still bugs me today and gives me existential anxiety because I still don't have a plausible explanation as to why I had such a specific dream that actually ended up coming true. David Chalmers is a well-known philosopher who focuses on the nature of consciousness, looking into why and how physical processes in the brain give us the feeling of being conscious. Chalmers is also interested in the idea that we might be living in a computer simulation. Now, Chalmers really makes the whole simulation thing seem less scary than it sounds. He has a much more chill view on it 
in general. One of Chalmers' key points is that if we are living in a simulation, it wouldn't necessarily change our everyday experiences or the fact that we have minds and are conscious. He thinks that even if our world is just some sophisticated simulation, it would still be real to us. Our feelings, thoughts, experiences, it'd still be genuine, even if the actual reality is different from what we see it as. So he looks at more the philosophical side rather than the scientific details. He's interested in how a scenario like this would impact our understanding of reality and consciousness. Finally though, we have a story again from Reddit user RespectRemarkable294 with a post entitled, I was never there before. She writes, I had never in my life been to Universal, but when I was planning our dual vacation at Disney and Universal, my kids kept asking me what rides were at Disney because I had been there before and I told them every single ride and every detail that I could remember. The Mummy, Men in Black, The Simpsons, you get the picture, only to realize not one of them are at Disney rides. My explanation, well, maybe Disney used to own them. I know, stupid, but whatever gets me through the day. We go on our trip and go to Men in Black and we're waiting in line and I tell my husband everything that's gonna happen right before it's happening. It's like I remembered a script. Same thing is happening on all the other rides. However, it doesn't happen on the newer ones, like Harry Potter rides, etc. I called my mom and asked her again if we'd ever been there when we were young and again she told me no. I am 38 years old. I would have definitely remembered, but I keep asking. It just feels wrong and I feel like I'm being lied to. I also know for a fact that I never have been to Universal and I've never been on these rides prior. I never watched videos either. I hate having rides ruined with them. Of course, all this simulation stuff is impossible to really test or prove, right? At least at this stage. So it's just something that's interesting to ponder. Plus, if we really are in a simulation, the rules of our universe are probably completely controlled by the creators of whatever this simulation is. So it'd be pretty tricky to find definitive evidence or glitches in the system. Hey, until we find out, let's just, uh, I don't know, keep enjoying it as best as we can. I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.